Welcome to Mass from Queen of Angels Church at Queen of Angels and St. Matthias Parish in Chicago. Today is the feast of the Holy Family of Jesus, Mary, and Joseph. Our pastor, Monsignor Jim Kazarowski, is the celebrant. There is a link to the worship aid for this Mass on the Mass stream page of the parish website. The worship aid includes the music for the Mass, a link to the readings, and a prayer for spiritual communion, which we will pray together at communion.
God, who were pleased to give us the shining example of the Holy Family, graciously grant that we may imitate them in practicing the virtues of family life and the life one day of the eternal rewards through Christ our Lord. A reading from the book of Sirach. God sets a father in honor over his children. A mother's authority he confirms over her sons. Whoever honors his father atones for sins and preserves himself from them. When he prays, he is heard. He stores up riches who reveres his mother. Whoever honors his father is gladdened by children. And when he prays, is heard. Whoever reveres his father will live a long life. He who obeys his father brings comfort to his mother. My son, take care of your father when he is old. Grieve him not as long as he lives. Even if his mind fail, be considerate of him. Revile him not all the days of his life. Kindness to a father will not be forgotten. Firmly planted against the dead of your sins, a house raised in justice to you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. humility, 
gentleness, and patience, bearing with one another and forgiving one another if one has a grievance against another. As the Lord has forgiven you, so must you also do. And over all these put love, that is, the bond of perfection. And let the peace of Christ control your hearts, the peace into which you are also called in one body. And be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, as in all wisdom you teach and admonish one another, singing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs with gratitude in your hearts to God. And whatever you do, in word or in deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. On this feast of the Holy Family, I thought we might talk a little bit about good parenting. A Protestant minister who had children told me good parenting is like a good golf swing. It's the grip that really counts. He said, if you grip if, you, if, you, if your grip is too loose to the club and you swing it, the club will fly away and you'll have a bad shot. But also, if the grip is too tight in the club, all your muscles are restricted in the upper body and the club cannot do the action it is supposed to do, swing it. So, not too loose and not too tight. Ben Hogan, one of the famous golfers of all time, uh, I read in his book many years ago, when I was learning how to play golf, was that the way you hold a, a golf club is think you have a bird in your hand. 
and hold it, hold it enough so it won't fly away, but don't hold it so tight you may hurt it. That's what he said with good parenting is. Uh, if parents are too loose in bringing up their children, uh, they spin out of control. But if they're too tight in bringing up their children, they're not allowed to go through the normal stages to grow up to be normal adults that could deal with all the things that they, we have to face in life. Today, in the Gospel today, we have the presentation of, of Jesus to the temple. Mary and Joseph were told by the angel to name him Jesus, and after they got themselves together a little bit in Bethlehem a couple weeks, they went to the temple for purification. Good Israelites, good Jewish people did that, to be blessed. And before Jesus could talk or walk, they guided him in his faith. Good parents know that when a child is born, that the child's life depends on the parents. The child is totally dependent on the parents for nutrition, for all the physical needs. If the parents don't do that, the child can get awfully sick. Uh, but thoughtful parents are also concerned not only about the physical needs of the child, but the spiritual and emotional, as Joseph and Mary were. Mary studied in a convent, she knew about her faith. And she took Jesus every year to the temple. That was the Jewish law, like with the Easter duty to receive communion during Easter time. That's what they did. And Jesus did not know he was God at that time. He grew in knowledge, and we'll see that in the reading, and then the passage right after this passage of Luke, and we only get two snapshots of Jesus as a child. So they did that. And what really, you know, bothers me at times. And you've probably heard this from, from, from parents yourself. You know, well, we decided, Father, we're going to let the child grow up and decide for themselves their faith. Well, I feel like it's asking them, well, should you tell your child you could eat chocolate and ice cream and candy as long as they want? Or do you want them to get nutrition? The same thing with being the best version of ourselves spiritually. When I, it really touches my heart when I see parents bringing their children to, to church, leading by example, taking them to a soup kitchen, uh, doing corporal works of mercy with them. We lead by example. I, when children bring their little children for baptism to the church, you know, as, as Mary and Joseph brought Jesus for the presentation to the temple to be blessed and purified. This is what, what we're meaning by not being too loose with our children. A parent wouldn't tell their children just to go out on the street and figure it out for yourself. You know, look both ways, and watch for the green light, be careful. It's all about not being too loose. Now, the, the second reading is right after this. This is Luke. It ends in, in verse 31, Luke chapter 2, and 31 to 42. Is it now Jesus jumps to the presentation of the temple? And most of you know the story. Good Jews went every year to the temple. It was a duty of their faith. And it was, a, it was really a, a very expensive thing for travel, especially for poor people like um, Mary and, and Joseph. They were very, very poor. Because it been at the presentation when they went to the temple for it to be blessed. When Jesus was a baby, they brought two turtle doves because a lot of people could bring cattle. But Jesus, Jesus really looks at our hearts and knows our, our, what our sacrifice is, not what we give, what we have left over. So here they go on this trip, and they're starting to, you know, not be so tight with Jesus. He's 12 years old, so, you know, they figured you could hang around with his friends, you know, in Jerusalem. They're going to go to the temple, pray, hang out with some of his friends. And then coming back uh, to uh, 
Nazareth, their home, halfway back, they find out he's not in the caravan. He's lost. So they go back to the temple. And they see Jesus now talking in theological terms they couldn't imagine. You can see he's growing now in the knowledge. He's becoming to understand that he is the Son of God. And what they say to him over there is, you know, tell us where you're at. So there was some give and take there. They let him play with their friends, but they should have told him where he was at. So they, and he, they said he left, he, when he went back, he went back obediently. Uh, as the scripture says, so he understood that there was a give and take in his growing up. So what that part of scripture tells us about not being too tight is we've all heard of heard of helicopter with our parents. Like Mary and Joseph did not hover over Jesus. If we hover over someone, they can't learn how to grow. You have to fail to succeed. Uh, the biggest regrets in life are not that you failed, but you never tried. And parents who try to protect their children and never ever fail and try to do everything for them really are hurting them. Because we have to let our children go and learn for themselves. I reflected on my life. I do not remember one day in high school that my parents asked me, did you do your homework? Did I always do my homework? No. Did I learn when I didn't do my homework and the penalty, the penalty I had to pay uh, in school, being drugged or whatever? Yes, I learned. I learned to do my homework. But I learned on my own by 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 not failing, and then and after that, it became easier and easier for me to grow. But if everyone's always telling their children exactly what to do, then when the child becomes an adult. The child is an adult in physical appearance, but not in emotional appearance. We have to fail to grow. That's what, 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 what the Holy Family is telling us about not hovering over anyone. Ted Williams, I think, was one of the few baseball players that batted over 400. That means 600% of the time he didn't get a hit. People who bat 300% uh, are in the Hall of Fame. They have a 300 average. 700 percent, they don't, they don't, uh, they, they fail. Michael Jordan failed in over 50, 50 percent of his shots. One of the greatest basketball players, but you, we have to, as parents, we have to, have to let go uh, of, our, of our children as they grow, and we have to, have to follow our hearts on them. So as we looked at the Holy Family today in those two snapshots, uh, they weren't too loose or too tight. Maybe we could reflect on that regarding our children. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate on the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead 
and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us now pray for the needs of our brothers and sisters, the most vulnerable, and for our own personal intentions. Please respond to each intercession. Lord, hear our prayer. For the Church, that like Mary, we may be faithful servants to our God. As one holy family, we pray, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. For world leaders, that like Joseph, they may protect all those in their care. As one holy family, we pray, Lord, hear our prayer. For those who suffer from loneliness and doubt, that they may be comforted and guided by the Holy Spirit. As one holy family, we pray, Lord, hear our prayer. For parents and children, that they may show patience, trust, and love to one another. As one holy family, we pray, Lord, hear our prayer. For our family of faith at Queen of Angels and St. Matthias Parish, that we may be filled with faith and grow together in wisdom in the coming year. As one holy family, we pray, Lord, hear our prayer. For all the sick, especially Carlotta Pyrek, Angelo Molina, Father Larry McNally, Victorino Gallegos, Eduardo Lopez, Carmen Maida, Antonia and Santana Rivera, Pat Gabor, Erin Brophy, Kathleen McCarthy, Lisa and Lupe Almanderas, Craig Cassidy, Nora L. Ramirez, Yana Lerena, John Nowinski, Mark Dalka, Gregorio Valdez, Father Ted Borgia, Sister Mary Ann's Rest, Tony Brica, Antonio Beltran, Michael Acton, Joanna Wright, Meta McKinroy, Rosemary Swartz, Ora Rizzo, Ruslara and Renee Delgado, Leticia Rivera, Montserrat Trujillo, Debbie and Valenera, Mary Beth Hamilton, Joanne Piquet, Cesar Diaz, Jim Koskin, Jim and Donna Baker, Pamela Swinkins, Jose Barraza, Emilia Rincon, Mario Yu, Pureta Tavis, Catherine Harvey, Carla Jenna Fernandez, and Jose Herrera, and those suffering from COVID-19, that they may be strengthened by God through the care of family and friends. As one holy family, we pray, Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For all those who have died, especially Elia Castaneda, Rudy Gabor, Sai Petra, Tom Moravitz, Edward Stringer, Francis O'Neill, Rosalina Abahuro, Teresa Wagner, Bonificio Lapade, Raymond Swider, Regina Mason, Eva Stetch, George Skizis, Harold Corrigan, and Nicolasa, Nicolasa Castaneda, that they may live forever in God's heavenly kingdom. As one holy family, we pray, Lord, hear our prayer. We pause now to remember the intentions of Sister Eliza M. Lopez, Berta Mikoshenko, and the McMahon and Buchanan families, as well as the needs we hold in our hearts. As one holy family, we pray, Lord, hear our prayer. All loving and giving and forgiving God, we ask you to hear all our prayers and let them share today those deep within our hearts. Through your beloved Son, Jesus, our light and hope, who lives with you in unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Thank you. 
the memorial of his death and resurrection. We offer you, O Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and the blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Lord, remember your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis our Pope, Blaise our Bishop, and all your holy people. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them to the light of your face. Have mercy on us all that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
Behold Jesus in our light, our love and our hope. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am now worthy you should enter under my roof. But only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ bring us to everlasting life. Bring those refreshed with this heavenly sacrament, most merciful Father, to imitate constantly 
the example of the Holy Family, so that after the trials of this world, we may share in their company forever through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May our Father's face always shine upon us. May the Son's love forever be in our hearts. And may the Holy Spirit grant us health, happiness, and peace of mind. And may Almighty God bless us all in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Mass is ended as go in peace to love and serve our Lord. Have a wonderful Sunday. Oh.